and welcome to part two of the video diary that I'm creating for you to give you a bit of a behind the scenes look of what it is to be a QCS exam marker. That's the Queensland state exams for students in year 12. Um, I just want to give you a bit of a inside look at what it is to do external exam marking. External meaning anything outside of school. And to also show you just what goes into the analysis of your work. What goes into those marking guides and how we use them. And I thought that as I'm actually about to be embarking on this, this would be a great way to do that. So in my first video, I showed to you um, the pack that I got through, the information that you get as a marker, how much there really is in there and how much there is to digest before you even see the marking guide. And so what I left you with was the fact that I had to go away and decide which sections of the paper I wanted to mark. Remember, this is not subject specific. This is a generic paper which covers all sorts of cross curricular skills, covering obviously literacy and numeracy. But for example, if I give, if I tell you about the question that I have been accepted to mark, and it was actually my top choice, um, this is an extract from uh, a film. It's part of a film script, and it's to do with the analysis. Of that and looking for the meaning behind certain things and being able to analyze some of the characters and things so I decided this year to go for and opt for a more English a more literacy based question so that I would get a wider variety of experience in terms of exam marking which hopefully will just help you guys even more so here it is I'll just give you a quick view because the, obviously the test been and gone so I'm able to just uh, be able to give you a quick sneak preview. Now I'll talk more about what's in that question or set of questions, what's in that section, what resources there are, what the questions say, when I actually go in and start the actual exam marking, which starts tomorrow. We start exam marker training, I should say, tomorrow. Um, and I thought I'd show you though how it compares to the one I did last year. So the one I did last year was very much more numeracy and maths based which is why I thought it'd be good to have a really nice variety this year, um, which is great, that's worked out. The one that I did last year was actually from unit five or section five of the QCS test. And you can see that it starts off with a graph, which is all to do with the number of downloads of a video on YouTube. It then goes on to a networking question, which is to show how that is spread, basically, how people share it between each other and how many views escalate from that and then it goes on to essentially um, creating a formula from the stats so that an estimate can be made of what happens in the future and how many views there will be in a, at a future period. So very much a numeracy based uh, test question. I'll also give you a quick view of what my marking guide looks like for that. So I keep all of my exam resources, all of my marker resources um, and just like I've mentioned before on some of my trainings, um, exam markers get given a marking guide or a mark scheme, but then we're taken through every little bit of nitty gritty detail on it. And so we ha make all our own notes, all our own highlighting all over it. So if I show you what that marking guide looks like, I hope you can see that. Um, and you can see all of my scribbles, all of my highlighting all over it. Uh, this was just an example sheet and it shows some of the acceptable values that were given and where lines should be marked on the graph in a visual kind of way. And then the other marking guide sheet for the second part of that task. So yeah, there's a lot that goes into it and it's very, very super specific. And the whole point of this is that because it's so super specific, if you don't know what those specifics are, you're gonna be missing out on easy marks, okay? Or marks that you could have otherwise got. Marks that you were capable of getting, but because you didn't realize how specific the marking guide was or exactly what it was looking for, you might have missed out on that. And I'll show you um, an example of what I mean. So, for example, the first question, the one with that graph, uh, simply says, how much time elapsed between when the number of daily views was 1 million and when it was 2 million? Show relevant markings on the graph to justify your response. So, there's actually two parts in that question, but it's not divided into part A and part B or part one and part two. So that's where it can get really tricky to make sure that you have answered all of those sections and your brain can start to focus on one part and miss out the other part. For example, how much time elapsed between when the number of daily views was one million and two million, where you find those points on the graph, 
you look down and you can see what those dates are. It's not a too difficult a question. So you can work out the number of days. But then you kind of go, brilliant, yep, yeah, done, because obviously we're under pressure in exams, we're under time pressure, and therefore you start moving on to the next question and you forget the part that says show relevant markings on the graph to justify your response. And that's not difficult because all you've got to do is put a little cross and a line to show where you looked on the graph to find them. So where you'd go down, and that's what this marking guide was all about. So you can see those marks that are put on. It's not difficult to mark two lines onto a graph where it's at 1 million and 2 million. Most people could do that when they realise that's what they needed to do, but many students missed out on getting full marks for a relatively simple question just because they didn't put those lines on. Or they put the lines on and then they didn't work out the actual number of days in between. They just looked at the two dates. So this is what we mean when you hear teachers or um, your lecturers talk about read the question. They say it and they say it and they say it, but you never quite know what they mean. This is an example of one of those times. The more examples I give you of this, the more you'll start to see it. And hopefully the more examples you get, you'll know exactly what you're looking for when they say, read the question carefully. Um, okay, the next one is the most interesting example. The next part of this question says, use the information provided by the graph to estimate the total number of times the video clip was viewed during the last week of August. Now the interesting thing is, if I show you that up close, you can see the two words in bold are total and last week. That's because they wanted to make sure that you added up all of those days. You don't just take one day or an average day or anything like that. You had to add up the total number of days for the week, the total number of views in every day that week. And they wanted to make sure you had the right time frame, the week. But the word they didn't highlight is the command word in that question. And anyone who's in or has done my 10 week program will know all about command words. And if you've read any of my publications, you'll know that command words are so, so important and they don't always highlight them for you. So it's very easy to read over that word estimate. And let me tell you that so many students did such in-depth calculations to work this out. They went through, some of them were doing um, calculus to calculate the area under the graph. Some people were trying to do um, the area of a trapezium by working out the width and the angle of the line and all this sort of stuff. When really, all they needed to do, and some, oh, some people drew lines in for every single day in that week and then had to add them up and then um, that isn't too difficult but it's certainly very long-winded and would take up a lot of your time. When really, they, all they had to do was, was estimate. And if they did any of those methods that I've just mentioned and they got the answer right, well, that was great, they got the marks, but it would have taken them so, so, so long and used up time that they could have been getting other marks on other parts of the paper on. All they had to do was to estimate, was take the first point that they had to for the first day of the week that it's talking about, second day of the week that it's talking about, estimate where the middle is, and then multiply that by seven. All they had to do was take the start point, the end point, find the middle point, because it's an estimate, and multiply by seven. That would have still got them exactly the same marks as someone who started trying to work out the area of a trapezium and doing all these calculations and working out every single uh, viewing on every single day and adding them up. All they had to do was estimate. And people didn't realize that because they didn't read the command word estimate. So I thought I'd show you that as a bit of an example from last year, just to give you a bit of a flashback or give me a bit of a flashback really, and give you some preview, I guess, as to what's to come this year um, with the marking that I'm going to be doing. Uh, so, training starts tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have time tomorrow to give you a video to tell you a little bit about what I've learned and what I've picked up in that training. And I'll look forward to seeing you then. Okay, bye-bye.